pieces, they can be flat work, they can be scroll sod, you can add color to anything. <clears throat> Today I'll talk a bit about stains, different stains, different types of stains and different types of solvents that you can use with stains. Um, then I'll talk about painting and creating marbling sort of effects. I'll talk briefly about the finishes, uh, the paints, but in more depth, I will show you how to do this process of marbling, okay? So there's many different ways you can add color to your work pieces. Um, you can use aniline dyes. These are aniline dyes. You can buy dyes that are soluble in water, that are soluble in alcohol, that are soluble in acetone. Any uh, dye that will dissolve in denatured alcohol will dissolve in acetone, varsol, mineral spirits, and methyl hydrate. They're all good solvents to use when using dyes or powdered dyes. With powdered dyes, um, you only really need the tip of a jackknife and you have a really vibrant color. Um, if you have too much color, you can water it down just by adding more solvent or more water. If it's a water-based stain like these, these are water-based stains uh, or dyes. I bought the dyes and I added water. These have no VOCs. My basement doesn't stink when I use them. But when I use aniline dyes that have to be dissolved, say, in denatured alcohol, or varsol, acetone, mineral spirits, or methyl hydrate, they do have a significant stink to them, and they can stink up your finishing room or your house. Um, these two are also dyes that I bought, I believe, at Home Depot or Home Hardware. They came with the bottles, and they came with the dye. All you had to do was add water. They come in primary colors, red, blue, and yellow, and from that, you can make all your secondary colors. So, uh, yellow and blue make green. Blue and red make purple. Red and yellow make orange. And you can add them all together and make a muddy brown baby poop color of black. <laughs> or blackish brown. Um, <clears throat> When I use these colors, I usually only use one at a time. But after I'm done with them, I don't dump them down the drain because they will go into our water. They will go into our sewage. Um, if it's a water-based one, it's not nearly as toxic as, say, a acetone, denatured alcohol. A more noxious solvent, I wouldn't uh, put down the drain. So those I save. Whenever I use uh, a certain color, it always gets emptied into this container, which was an empty container of mineral spirits, and it is solvents. So the solvents I would use would be either acetone, varsol, methyl hydrate, or mineral spirits. And if I'm using dyes that are dissolved in any of those solvents, they would be poured in this jar because all the alcohols, acetones, varsols, and methyl hydrates, they all evaporate over time, um, leaving the color behind. Also, once I have a color in here that just keeps getting muddier and muddier, eventually it will be black, and I can use it to ebonize stuff. Okay, can you hold that, that last one? No, okay, sorry, no, sorry. No, the... That is methyl hydrate? Yes. 
Where do you get that from? You can get this at Home Depot, Home Hardware, Canadian Tire. I don't think you can get it at Walmart, but you can get it at all the hardware stores. Um, I have also, on the other hand, you can dissolve your stains and dyes into solvents. If you do that, you will have, you will have a far more vibrant color. But you can also add dyes to your finishes to give it a tinted color to your finish. But if you use finishes, finishes are usually amber in color, yellow, or yellow over time. So the color will be, will get darker over time when using it in a finish. If I use it in a finish, I usually do a 50-50 finish to a solvent to water it down so the wood is really absorbs the color and it penetrates into the wood. If it's end grain, you have to watch that it doesn't go right through the end grain to the other side because if you don't want that color on the other side of the end grain, you're kind of, you're pooched. You can't, if you can't get rid of it, you're stuck with it. Um, you can use water-based ones. I like using the alcohol solvent based ones because it doesn't raise the wood grain. But in using the water based ones, I can get a raised fuzzy finish from the wood, which gives it more of a pottery texture, pottery feel. Um, also when you're painting it or dabbing it or sponging it, it also creates texture to the piece. So if you are going to dye stuff, you don't have to sand as much. You don't have to sand all the way up to 240, 320, 340. Um, actually, the less you sand, the more of a vibrant color the wood is going to absorb. If you sand to, say, 600 and you're sanding at a high speed, you're going to burnish the wood. It'll be nice and pretty and shiny, but it's not going to absorb nearly as much stain as it would if you sand it to 180 or 240. Um, these boxes I didn't sand at all. This one I will do a little bit of dyeing uh, just to show you how it reacts. Um, I'm not going to paint the whole piece because it would take quite some time. It would be boring to watch me paint. That's why I painted this this afternoon sitting on my couch because this is the piece I'm going to show you how to do this marbling technique. The marbling technique you have to start with a base color. A base color is usually a primary color. Did you have plastic on the couch? No. No, I was actually wearing my good clothes too at the time and I made sure I didn't spill nothing on it. I changed before I came to the meeting in case I make a mess. Or if I get it on my hands, I can just wipe it on my pants. Um, so that's staining. Uh, when I stain stuff, oh, these are perfect. I have a cat, and she's quite a princess. She loves soft food. It's actually better for their eyes, their teeth, their skin, their fur. So every, every day she gets a teaspoon of uh, wet food with dried food all day. Uh, so I save these, and these are basically my staining, my finishing uh, containers, which I put finish in, but they're also my paint palettes. So if I'm using multiple paints, I will have multiples of these, or I will have one color paint on one side and another color paint on the other side. Um, if I'm going to mix them, I would mix them with a toothpick. So in staining and dyeing, you can use uh, paint brushes, sponges, they all work the same. The sponge will give you a spongy texture. A paintbrush will give you a brush texture. If you go over it many more times, it will be smooth. In staining items, uh, you usually want to pick colors that work together or accent one another. Um, so primary colors accent one another. But when you're doing the marbling, you want to have multiple colors of the same color. So a dark, for instance, in this piece, um, I started with a light blue. I used a green, a yellow, and a dark blue to create the... And you build upon the texturing with sponges. 
I make my own sponges, I cut my own sponges, and I cut those sponges out of this material. If I use this side, I get a textured look. If I use this side, it's a much smoother look. So on this bowl, I use this side. How I created my sponges is, I just sat on the couch with my scissors and I started cutting out different shapes that I could use as sponges. I would cut a smaller piece, CA glue it on the back so I have something to hold on to so my hands aren't covered in uh, paints or stains. The sponging effect, I haven't tried with stains yet, but I have tried with paints. So these are my big, big uh, sponges. I will pass these around. These are what I would use on a bowl. Since I didn't have a bowl big enough to demonstrate this piece, I had a couple boxes I just did on the weekend at my Lee Valley box classes. So I had two to play with. So this one I'm going to, I didn't sand. I painted the outside. There's different paints on the market too. So there's acrylic paints, there's water-based paints, there's oil-based paints, there's uh, premium stain paints, there's stain acrylic paints, um, there's a wide variety of different types of paints. I'm on him now. These, believe it or not, are hair dyes. I haven't used these yet, but anything that has color you can use as a dye. You can use hair dyes, you can use shoe polishes, you can use paint stains, it's whatever sort of color effect you're looking for. So in this piece, so these five pieces right here were stained with stains that were, this was also stained with these were all stained with inline dyes that were dissolved in solvents. You can buy them in powders and you can add them to your solvents to create solid colors. At some retailers you can buy them already mixed. You can buy them in bulk as well and you can mix them yourself. <coughs> so for instance the top of this one, the top finial is ash, and I used this red straight out of the bottle, the concentration straight out of the bottle, and it gave me this very deep, deep, dark crimson red. When I dyed the body of the box, I wanted a little bit of a white wash so I could see the wood grain and the ambrosia maple staining caused by the ambrosia beetle. So with this, I did a whitewash stain. I took some of this, I diluted it with some mineral spirits, and I also added a teaspoon of tongue oil, so it cures on the inside, penetrates and cures. This piece was done the exact same way. It was with yellow and red. My initial color was yellow that I whitewashed down with acetone and that was my first coat. My second coat I used the red whitewashed down with the same solvent uh, mineral spirits and um, red and yellow make orange. But in doing that technique in doing that technique the yellow was absorbed first, and the yellow was absorbed into the wood grain and into the softer parts of the wood. After that, I put the red over top, it mixed with the yellow, it created orange, but the orange stayed on the surface of the wood. So it gives you an undertone of yellow with an overtone of orange, because the two colors mix together. So a lot of this is trial and error and playing, I did learn a couple things overseas, um, but from that, I've just been playing. Uh, you can learn different things on YouTube. 